Hey, juniors. Hello from the Campbell household. I didn't think I'd be doing this again. Uh, this virtual learning, recording my video lessons from home, but here I am. I tried to get it done today at school, but I ran out of time. Eli, maybe you can help me. Um, it takes forever for videos from my phone to upload to my YouTube channel. And if there's something that I can do to expedite that, I sure would appreciate any help that you could give me. Um, but like a 45 minute video, takes a couple hours to upload. Uh, maybe I'm exaggerating, but it feels like that. So anyway, um, welcome to the Campbell household. I'm actually stuck back here in my bedroom. Um, I don't know if you guys can see my doggies. They are, ooh, hello pup puppies. Want to say hi? Uh, it is bedtime at the Campbell household. My husband's out of town, so I'm trying to get some last minute work done here before school tomorrow. So um, I think I've already mentioned this in my uh, me message today, but um, basically the way this is going to work for the next couple weeks is that your lesson will become available to you during your regular class time. So uh, right before 11 o'clock tomorrow, the lesson will open up and you will have access to it, instructions as to what to do. Um, the lessons are designed to be about 90 minutes long, uh, which is how long I would have you in class. We still have a lot of ground to cover this semester, so I'm not gonna slow down much. Everything that I'm going to, get, all the instructions I'm gonna give you, you are capable of doing at home. Um, pay attention to my lectures, my video lectures. I'm gonna try to teach just as if I, I was in class. They'll actually probably be a little bit shorter uh, since you're not taking notes and such. I'm going to make the all of the PowerPoints available to you. You'll have them either on Google Classroom if you wanna print them out at home. I think you can do that. Um, from Google Classroom. So um, so today's lesson, I'm going to do Thomas Jefferson Part 2 and just very briefly talk about his second term in office. The book doesn't go into much detail about it. Um, I could teach a whole class on Thomas Jefferson. I'm fascinated by the guy. Um, but we don't have time to do that. So we're going to do a real quick final look at Thomas Jefferson t today. Uh, you'll notice I have Mr. John Adams uh, behind me. Uh, this is actually a picture that uh, Chapman painted for me, I guess his senior year in high school, probably, or it's an oil pastel or something. Anyway, uh, John Adams is probably my favorite historical figure, maybe, maybe George Washington. I like Thomas Jefferson too, but John, Adam, John Adams holds a special place in my heart. Um, so anyway, he's here visiting with us because why not? So, um, also, I wanted to point this out to you. Uh, this is this book is called The Jefferson Lies, and uh, the second part of the lesson today is going to deal with a uh, chapter out of this book. And so, Thomas Jefferson has been um, sort of demonized by historians, uh, misrepresented by historians. Part of that's his own fault because he was a very quiet person, did not respond to accusations, but he was also a conflicted person. And so his position on political things and uh, religious things and a whole host of things changed a lot during his lifetime. And I don't know that there's a solid answer for some of the things. I think he just held different positions over the course of his life. But um, Thomas Jefferson, as I mentioned before, is a person who... Uh, wrote the Declaration of Independence, obviously. He believed in the natural rights of man and that men, all men were designed to be born free and to desire liberty and uh, desire the ability to pursue happiness, whatever that looked like for them. Um, he was uh, verbally or openly opposed to slavery and talked about the evils of slavery, but was also honest in his assessment that he really didn't know um, what to do uh, to solve the problem of slavery. Uh, and he made a lot of choices in his life that caused him to be, um, I'll use the word figuratively, chained to slavery. Uh, his plantation had about 600 slaves. He owned more slaves than any other of our founding fathers, I think of any of our presidents, um, which is ironic given the fact that he said he was opposed to slavery and he wrote the Declaration of Independence. So, um, But I believe he found himself in financial situation that prevented him from being able to make the hard decisions that George Washington was willing to make uh, to sacrifice the financial um, 
profit of slavery that Washington was willing to do, Jefferson was not willing to do because he found himself in a lot of financial difficulties. He spent a lot of money on frivolous things. He liked to travel. He liked to buy expensive things. He liked to design. He liked to buy clothes. He liked to buy furniture. He loved books. Um, and he found himself, he collected um, many a book and had quite the collection. And then he would have to sell his collection to pay off some of his debts. And so um, he was just a conflicted guy. Um, as far as religion goes, I personally think he was a Christian. Um, I think he was a believer, but I think that he um, struggled with doubt. And I think he um, kind of was full of himself a little bit from time to time, thought he had it you know, was a brilliant man. Um, he was wrapped up in the enlightenment and reason and all of those things and surrounded himself by people who thought that he was very important and thought that he was very intelligent. And so he struggled with, uh, I think, struggled with um, self-importance. I'll just put it that way. So um, I believe that we will see him in heaven, um, but he definitely has written different things throughout the course of his life that would draw somebody to, to doubt where he stood because he was here, he was there. Um, so anyway, um, so after I finish uh, my very brief lecture about his second term in office, um, I want you guys to watch the ultimate guide to the president's uh, sec video on him. It's, it, I, I wrote down the, the minute markers in the Google Classroom. So it's only, I don't know, seven or eight minutes long. Um, and then um, I have uploaded uh, the, um, the article that I want you to read uh, for the rest of class. And it's titled, I think it's... Uh, I'm not sure where I put it. I think I titled it the um, the Jefferson Bible, and so Thomas Jefferson was a philanthropist as well. He he spent money on on money he didn't have on things that were important to him. One of the things that was very important to him was um, making Bibles available to Native American tribes um, as an evangelistic tool. Uh, he was a member of the um, Bible Tract Society. He contributed money to have Bibles printed for people. Um, one of the things that he did, and I think it happened when he was president, I need to go back and look at that, but um, he had, he owned several different Bibles in different languages. And so he would cut out the, I think the different languages and kind of line them up and paste them out on a page. Another thing that he did was um, he picked some of the miracles or some of the stories in the Old Testament or in the New Testament about Jesus and he cut them out of different translations and different things and, and he pasted them together and he kept a personal copy of uh, different stories about Jesus. Um, not for sale or anything. It'd be kind of like if I wanted to, uh, to uh, produce a devotional that dealt specifically with love. What does the Bible say about love? And so I cut out all of the... or went on the computer and found all of the verses that deal with love, excluded everything else, but it just specifically was a devotional about what does the Bible say about love? So that's kind of what he did, except it was um, stories about Jesus. And so that's been misinterpreted that uh, Jefferson thought that he could create a better Bible than the actual Bible, and then he made his own Bible, and it was called the Jefferson Bible. Uh, so um, after reading this uh, book and that particular, this, what you're going to read today, I came to the, I came to a different conclusion that Thomas Jefferson didn't create his own Bible for the purpose of creating a new Bible. Um, so anyway, I want you to read that. We were going to have a Harkness discussion today, had things been a normal week, and we were going to have a Harkness discussion on that article. And um, so in lieu of that, I want you to read the article as if we were going to do a Harkness discussion. And on your daily assignment log that you'll fill in at the end of class today, I want you to submit five talking points on that Google Doc related to this, the article that you just read. Um, if you, so it would be things that you would want to bring up in a Harkness discussion or just things that you found interesting. Um, I would like for you to cite the page number uh, of where you found this particular thing that you thought was interesting. If you want to throw out a question um, to the group, um, like if there's something you want that you would like to discuss in question form, remember if you, if you submit a question, you need to also submit your answer, what you, your conclusion is. Um, and let me think what else. So 
Towards the end of class tomorrow, I'm going to jump into the Google Classroom and start asking you some questions about the article. Uh, and I want everybody to try to chime in on that conversation. So it'll be kind of like a group chat. Um, so I'll probably do that about maybe 12.15 or so. Um, uh, I'm going to try to remember to do that. Hopefully I won't forget. So anyway, so real quickly, let me just kind of summarize or wrap up Thomas Jefferson's second term in office. I mentioned this um, on Monday's lesson that Th Thomas Jefferson didn't enjoy the presidency very much. Um, towards his second term, he began to have significant migraine headaches, uh, and he longed to be home at Monticello. Uh, but he did finish out his uh, second four years in office. Um, in the PowerPoint today, I just I repeated some of from from Monday. There's a um, a slide of all of the founding father presidents from Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe. We were on Jefferson. Um, his second term is from. 1806 to 1809. Uh, he is known as the leader of the Democratic Republican Party. Um, and during his second term, Great Britain and France started fighting again. And so another war broke out between those European countries. And um, again, once again, the United States, the United States found themselves uh, in the middle of that. And so whenever France and Britain are fighting one another, it affects our ability to trade with them uh, because the British don't want us sending or trading or, or supplying the French with anything and the French don't want us trading or supplying with the British and so the British would try to blockade France and they would stop American ships that were trading with France the French would also do the same thing if they encountered our, our merchant ships not necessarily our naval ships or uh, warships that just mer merchant ships that were full of merchandise that we were trying to sell. So anytime Br uh, Britain and France got into a squabble, it greatly affected the American economy. Uh, that still happens today. Um, during World War One and World War II, that's part of what lured us into those wars is that uh, uh, unrestricted submarine warfare by the Germans. They were blowing up our ships in the North Atlantic and the Atlantic Ocean, ships that we were trying to get to the French and the British. Some of them were just passenger ships, some of them were ships full of food, and some of the ships probably had uh, secret ammunition on them. Um, but wars over there always tended to uh, impact our economy, um, and Jefferson was extremely frustrated. Um, and so one of the things that the British practiced was this thing called impressment, which I don't remember if we've talked about this yet or not, but essentially they would stop American merchant vessels, they would board them um, with the uh, claim that they were looking for uh, British sailors that had escaped or had gone rogue. Um, and they would take American um, boys and men and um, force them to become members of the British Navy. And so they sort of kidnapped them. And the British practiced doing this uh, over the course of a hundred years or something. It went, I mean, it was ridiculous. And American uh, got, uh, presidents and diplomats would protest this action, but the British continued to practice it. So um, that was extremely, extremely aggravating to Jefferson. Uh, and there's a, in the book in page uh, 202, it talks about, I think it's page 202, it might be 203. It talks about an incident um, towards the end of Jefferson's second term where an American um, naval a battleship or a warship uh, was stopped by the British um, and boarded. So this was different than boarding a, a merchant ship. This was actually a, uh, a warship, and the or they tried to board it, and the, the captain of the frigate would not let the British board the ship to look for their sailors. And so um, the British fired on the American frigate, and they killed, I think, three, so, three American naval soldiers or naval officers, not officers, Naval, I don't know what the proper word is for that. Um, I'll just say naval soldiers. Um, and uh, it was a big, big stink. Uh, Jefferson was furious. Americans were furious. How dare they? We're not even involved in that war. How dare they? And that led Jefferson to compel Congress to pass the Embargo Act of 1807. And so the Embargo Act of 1807 is Thomas Jefferson's Alien and Sedition Act. It's the worst thing that he did as president. Like Alien and Sedition Act was the worst thing John Adams did. Uh, the Embargo Act of 1807 was, was terrible. And essentially what it said was, 
Jefferson was like, fine, we're not going to trade with anybody. If y'all are going to act that way, we're not going to trade with anybody in Europe. So blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and uh, thinking that that would somehow punish them, I suppose it was a little bit uncomfortable uh, for the European countries, but it really killed American business because all of a sudden all these shipbuilding companies, um, all of these fishermen, all of these merchants who depended on trade with foreign countries suddenly were told, you can't sell to them anymore. Sorry, you'll have to find someone else to sell to. Well, it just, it cut their business, you know, in half or three quarters. And so businesses shuttered, shipbuilding companies closed. Um, it was devastating to the U.S. economy. And honestly, I don't know that Thomas Jefferson really cared. Uh, he was out the door. He was done being president. Uh, he shut that door to the White House and he did not look back. He went home back to Monticello where he continued to redesign um, his very famous house and he stuck his head in the sand. Um, he actually, he went to work on um, uh, creating the, uh, the University of Virginia that kind of became his next project. And uh, he just, he, he hated being president. And so actually on his tombstone, I believe it says, um, uh, author of the Declaration of Independence, um, founder of the Virginia, uh, University of Virginia, a couple of things, and it doesn't say anything about being president. To us, we'd be like, wow, that's the biggest thing you did. But to him, he was like, ugh. Um, and so he left the country kind of in shambles and he left James Madison to clean up the mess. James Madison had been Thomas Jefferson's secretary of state during his presidency. I don't know if he was secretary of state during the whole term or just the last term, but he was James Madison then becomes elected president and, um, and, le and he essentially, Jefferson leaves Madison with this mess of an economy and this terrible law uh, that is quickly reversed once James Madison becomes president. So uh, so we'll continue to talk about Jefferson as he comes up, uh, because he continues to be an important pig figure, I'm sorry, not figure, an important figure in American, uh, politics and history. Um, he just is no longer president and doesn't want to repeat that. So, um, and so, um, that's all I have to say. Um, you can, um, uh, now turn this video off and go get to reading the, um, the article called the Jefferson Bible. Okay. See ya.